So you just clicked on my video about different wireless network solutions and chances are that you're currently watching me using one right now. If you're not, then I'd still be willing to bet that you utilize Wi-Fi in some capacity in your home network. And if you don't, then I, I don't know, let me know how dinosaurs taste, I guess. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at three different Wi-Fi solutions for a home network from a regular consumer router to a high-end access point to a fancy new Wi-Fi 6E mesh system. Let's just say my overall conclusion on this subject may surprise you. All right, our competitors today are as follows. For the regular consumer router, we have an old yet capable Netgear R6700. For our high-end access point, we have a TP-Link EAP660HD, which I've already done a full review on, so feel free to check that out here. And for our mesh system, we are going with the brand new dual hub setup from TP-Link. This is the XE75 kit that was just released by TP-Link and provides coverage for larger homes or offices with cutting edge Wi-Fi 6E technology. Now I know what you're thinking, those three things are completely different. One's a router, one's an access point, and one's a mesh system. Yes, I know that. That's why this video is going to be a tale of two parts. In part one, we will discuss the differences between these setups and why or when you'd choose one over the other. And in part two, we will test that one thing they all have in common, Wi-Fi performance. Also, let me note that for all the tests in this video, I'll be unplugging the other two systems so as to not have any wireless interference going on. Okay, let's get started. So, like I said in part one, we will be discussing the differences between the setups, the router, the access point, and the mesh system. I'm gonna keep this high level as networking is such a rabbit hole that if we went into too much detail, I'd have grandkids before this was over. Now, when you buy a router like this, you're essentially buying a two-in-one setup, a router and an access point. The router functionality of it is going to allow you to connect this directly to your ISP modem to act as a DHCP server and firewall to give you those essential functions for your network. Personally, I run a dedicated router slash firewall that plugs into a switch, and from there, I connect directly to my access points. But in terms of simplicity and ease of setup, getting a consumer router slash access point is about as good as it gets. Now, just because it has router functionality as well as access point functionality, doesn't mean you have to use them both. You can set this device to access point only mode and have it only broadcast your Wi-Fi signal while other devices in your network handle routing traffic. On the flip side, you can turn the Wi-Fi signals off and have it only function as your router. All this sounds great, right? Why even go with a dedicated access point when you can buy a two-in-one setup like this? Well, it all really comes down to cost versus capabilities. If you want the latest technologies like tri-band Wi-Fi 6E with 2.5 gig uplinks, then you'll pay significantly more for those technologies if you go with a router slash access point combo. And as we'll see later in the video, those might not even be worth it. For this specific unit, the Netgear R6700, it's a dual band Wi-Fi 5 or wireless AC access point with speeds up to 1300 megabits per second on the five gigahertz channel. Wait, what? This old router can push 1300 megabits per second? Well, theoretically, but chances are you won't get anywhere near that. I go into more detail about this in my WTF is Wi-Fi 6 video, linked up here if you're interested, but it all boils down to the Wi-Fi protocol combined with the amount of channels in your device. For Wi-Fi 5, you get 433 megabits per channel, so this device with its three channels will give you around 1300 megabits per second. However, with networking, you're always limited by the speed of your slowest device. With Wi-Fi, that's often your client device. Most devices have a two by two configuration, meaning they have two transmission chains. So that will limit you to about 866 megabits per second as a theoretical max. Now I know it sounds confusing, but I do cover it more in my other video. Now, how does this TP-Link EAP660 HD access point differ? Well, for one, it's just an access point, so you'll need a separate device acting as your router slash firewall to combine it with. That's one of your immediate cons with this, but 
In some situations, it's not really a con. In some cases, you'll want to specifically upgrade Wi-Fi technologies without needing to touch your firewall, so keeping them separate could be what you're into. Now, this device specifically is about as premium as it gets in terms of access point technology these days. We get a dual band Wi-Fi 6 setup with a four x four configuration, which gives you a theoretical max of 2,400 megabits per second on the five gigahertz channel. Another cool thing about this is that it has 2.5 gigabit per second RJ45 uplink, which means that you could take full advantage of those gigabit plus Wi-Fi speeds when transferring data across your LAN to all your devices, assuming you have a 2.5 gigabit compatible switch and client. But let's play the same game as before. Maybe your client device is only a two by two configuration. Luckily with Wi-Fi 6, each channel has max speeds of 600 megabits per second giving us 1200 megabits per second total versus the 866 on the Netgear. Now, there's more that goes into this, such as frequency of the bands, as well as better technology used in newer Wi-Fi protocols, but this is a basic way of showing the differences. Okay, now we have the fancy TP-Link Wi-Fi 6E mesh system, which unlike the EAP660 can also function as a router offering the best of both worlds. This is a tri-band setup giving you two regular Wi-Fi 6 bands to use for connecting devices just like the EAP660, but it has a dedicated Wi-Fi 6E band that it uses to transfer data directly between the hub devices, giving you extremely fast and low latency communications no matter which hub you're connected to. You do have the option to use the Wi-Fi 6E band to connect directly to devices, but as of right now, there's not that many Wi-Fi 6E clients, so that's turned off by default. With these devices, you're getting all the speed we want, just like with the EAP660, but with the potential to have much better coverage, as well as a full router and firewall features. The only downside with these is that they are gigabit uplink and not 2.5 gig, so uplinks back to your modem or switch will be limited there. In terms of pros, it's pretty obvious what a mesh system brings to the table more range as one device connects directly to your router and the other can just be plugged in somewhere else in the building to provide a secondary connection point. And the cool thing with mesh systems is that the system will automatically connect you to the hub with the best signal. So no need to manually select which point you wanna access depending on where in the house you are. Setting up this kit is pretty easy as well when using the app as it's just a few clicks away from getting up and ready to go. Now this is kind of a double-edged sword as while the app is intuitive and easy to use, I often find myself rather using a web GUI, but that just comes down to personal preference. So as you can see, the system is packed with features and if that's mainly what you care about, then you can probably stop the video here. Please don't. However, we need to see how these devices actually perform in the real world in terms of both range and speed. So let's do that. All right, so here I am in my loft directly next to the router configurations and all my network gear. And I've tested uh, the speeds of all of them and I've run iPerf, which is a common network speed testing tool. And I'm gonna read off the three speeds that I got and you guys have to guess which ones they came from. So the fastest one came in at 710 megabits per second. The second fastest was 520 megabits per second and the slowest was 343 megabits per second. So take a wild guess at which ones those were. What are you doing? Okay, lay down. So I can almost guarantee you that you got it wrong because the fastest was actually the Wi-Fi 5 Netgear 2-in-1 router. The middle one was the EAP 6600, and the slowest was the Wi-Fi 6E fancy mesh system. Okay, I guess network stuff is boring. So yeah, that's really weird, right? And honestly, I've never had optimal results when testing out speeds from Wi-Fi using iPerf. I like to stick to real world scenarios, uh, like testing disk speeds across my network to my NAS. So that's what I did, a more real world test. And those results looked a lot more normal. So the fastest one was the EAP 660, which gave us 838 megabits per second. The second fastest was the Mesh XE75, which was 730 megabits per second. And the slowest was the Netgear at 
370 megabits per second. Now, obviously I've converted megabytes per second into megabits per second just to keep it all consistent, but are these results surprising? If you would have just showed me the disk speed tests over the network to my NAS, then not really. Um, that's kind of on par with what I've expected. The mesh system, I maybe would have expected to outperform the EAP 660, but uh, it is brand new. It is running, you know, really early firmware. I did actually just update it this morning, but this honestly hasn't even launched yet. So I'm sure there will be improvements on speeds and whatnot uh, as it gets released. But yeah, I can only report on my findings and what I'm seeing here using my uh, MacBook Air, which has a Wi-Fi 6 2x2 antenna. And I even uh, tested it with my iPhone, which also has a Wi-Fi 6 2x2 configuration. And same results, even using speed tests uh, over the network. And I have a one gigabit down connection, still getting these similar results as iPerf in terms of bandwidth. So why that's happening, I don't exactly know. I'm not a network engineer, but I can only report on the numbers I've found when testing. So those are the speed test numbers. And now I guess we get to test out range. So I'm gonna take my phone, uh, run around outside and see what kind of range we can get on these three devices. So see you guys there. Okay, so here we are obviously outside somewhere where I don't frequent very much, but the plan here is to go through each of the three Wi-Fi systems and see how far we can get down the road while still maintaining a decent connection. So the first one I'm going to test is the Wi-Fi 5 Netgear router. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna walk down there. I got my lav mic on. So while you may not see me, you will still be able to hear me. So as a base, let's run a test. Should get something decent out here. So yeah, 28 and let's go. All right, so we're about 100 feet away, about 150 feet away. Uh, let's give it a bit more and see what we can do here. All right, we are towards the end of my neighbor's house and man, we are still getting a decent connection here, which is surprising. Keep moving, keep up, up. Did we drop out? I think that might've done it. Let me find the last spot where we could even connect. Okay, this is, this is something's wrong with us. So we didn't get too far on the Wi-Fi 5, to be honest. I'm literally like right at my neighbor's house. Like you can see me on the camera. I'm not very far away from the house. And this is about as far as we can go before the internet connection just straight dips. All right, let's go ahead and switch to the EAP 660. So I'm gonna stand directly where the Wi-Fi 5 gave out and run a test, solid, faster. That's what I expected. Keep moving, just keep moving. A little more range. Okay, still good, still good. Hey, we're dipping out here, let's stop. Uh, eh. All right, we're still going. Let's try, if this gets the, if it gets the oh my God, okay. Uh, this may be it, right here. I think I'm calling it, yeah, okay. So you can probably still see me on the camera. Uh, about 50 feet further and in range of way more Wi-Fi networks. So we're probably getting much more interference, but man, okay. So the EAP is better. Now let's go ahead and try the mesh system. This should be better. All right, we are connected. And if it immediately can pick up a decent internet signal from here, then that is already just as good, if not better. And yeah, there we go, roughly the same same speeds and ping. I don't know if we're gonna get much further. Uh, I moved the mesh system down stairs, so it's not up in the loft, but let's see, we can keep moving. I doubt we're gonna get much further, to be honest. Yeah, we're done. So in terms of range, now you're not looking at a huge difference, even between the Wi-Fi 5 and the Wi-Fi 6, but what Wi-Fi 6, is actually better at is handling lots of devices on your network. So like you can see, we did get a significant, or I don't know if it's significant, but we did get an increase in range uh, from the Wi-Fi 5 to the Wi-Fi 6, not necessarily from the EAP to the mesh system, 
But it, then again, that just completely depends on how many Wi-Fi devices you have, how many Wi-Fi um, routers and systems are going on around you as well as your hub placement around your house. So again, I mean, kind of what we expected, but honestly, I was expecting a little bit more out of the mesh system. I was hoping with my placement downstairs directly on the outside of the house that we would get a bit more range than we did out of the EAP 660. But I don't know if this is a testament to the EAP 660 being really good or if the mesh system just underperforming. But again, these are my results and that is all I can provide you guys with. So let's head back upstairs and I will give you guys kind of an overall feeling of what I think about these different devices. All right, so that has been a test of the three different Wi-Fi configurations. And honestly, I don't think there's a real winner or loser here. Each one of them comes with a different use case and will get a recommendation depending on how you want to use it. So for your regular Joes and Janes out there who just want a standard Wi-Fi setup and you don't need the fastest speeds or the most cutting edge technology like beam forming and Wi-Fi 6E, then honestly, any modern Wi-Fi 5 or wireless AC router access point combo will probably be fine. I mean, we saw that this router access point combo from years and years ago is still functioning perfectly adequate for a modern system. So honestly, if that's all you need, then go with that. You will save a good bit of money um, and you'll probably not even notice the difference in terms of speeds versus a higher end system. Moving on to the two more modern, fancier setups, let's talk about the EAP660. So that is just an access point. It comes in at around $200, depending on if you can find it on sale. And honestly, it performs really well. As we could see from the real world tests, we did get the best speeds uh, in terms of file transferring from my NAS, and that's what I use personally. So, I mean, I recommend it. It's, it's good. Just know that you need a separate router to connect to it because it's only an access point. It will not function as a router. Moving on to the uh, TP-Link Deco XE75 mesh system. I have mixed feelings about this. I wanted to come in here and I fully expected to come in here and have that thing sweep everything and outperform it, but it really didn't. Um, in terms of the real world speed test, you could see it was at the bottom in terms of testing bandwidth using you know, speedtest.net or iperf. It did step its game up in terms of the real world test by file transferring from my NAS. And then we got to the range, which was on par, maybe slightly better than the EAP 660. But again, that is going to depend on how many devices you have on your network, as well as the positioning of the hubs around your house. Also note that it is a router as well as an access point. So you do get more for your money if you're looking for a lone device to handle both your router and your access point functionality. So, so which one would I recommend? Well, if you're going with a custom router solution like OpenWRT or PFSense, like I am, then I'd probably say go with the EAP660. It does fall in their Omada line, so you can utilize all the fancy Omada configurations and settings if you want to go with that. But if you're just fine with TP-Link standard router configurations and software, then the mesh system honestly will perform pretty well. Being able to easily add hubs around the house to give you more range and the 6E channel that, you know, as you add clients later on that 6E becomes more common, then you will see better performance out of that hub setup. But as of right now, I, I think it's a toss up between the EAP 660 and the XC75 system, but you know, it's up to you. It's up to your personal use cases. Everybody's not the same. Everybody has different needs out of their network configuration. So again, I can just show you what I found and give you my honest opinion, but that is it. I will link all of the, I keep doing this like they're still sitting on the desk which is weird, but I will link all three of the devices that I use down in the description below uh, with my affiliate links if you wanna go check them out. If you buy one, I get a little kickback. So 
I appreciate that if you do, but if you don't, whatever, it's perfectly fine. I'll just starve to death. But that is all I have for you today. I'd be interested to know what kind of network configuration you're running, specifically Wi-Fi. Are you running just a sole access point? Are you running something like Ubiquity or uh, TP-Link, Omada, any of those fancy setups, or do you have just you know a mesh system? Let me know down in the comments. But that is it. If you like this video, please drop a like below. If you like content like this, please consider subscribing. I'd really appreciate that. And I wanna give a shout out to my YouTube members and Patreons. You guys continue to surprise me by supporting me and giving me money every month. That's pretty freaking sweet, but you guys are freaking awesome. Thank all of you uh, for supporting me. But that is it. Uh, if you're still around, I sincerely appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.